suspense. Your host is Autolite, maker of all types of spark plugs, including sensational Autolite resistor spark plugs and dependable Autolite stay full battery. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks, bumpers and hubcaps, radiator grills and ornaments, bullseye seal beam headlights, ignition systems, spark plugs, batteries, fuel pumps, windshield wipers, instruments and gauges, wire and battery cable, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Navigation he ever did was bringing us to Switzerland because if we had never crashed in Switzerland, we never would have met Sita. Well, thank you, George. And now, D.P. Bradford, my own private pilot. Bon chance, bon chance. Hey. Mm -hmm. And am I glad we're all alive together? And now, what do you say we all pass out? Well, that's a fine house. Oh, it's so early, Joe. Oh, it isn't early. It's 7.30. I'm a half an hour late for puppy's walk already. Oh. I'm sorry, darling. Do you know, George, that Susan loves staying here at the Commodore? Because this way she can go every morning for a walk in Grand Central with her dog, Puppy. <laughs> puppy likes to walk on marble floors. I know, darling. Come on. I'll take you to the elevator. Peterson. Aren't you a bit late, Hilda? What's the matter? You're frightened by the height? The catwalks frighten you? She hasn't gone by yet. She's been going by the information booth every morning at 7. Maybe they checked out last night. No, no, they're still here. I called the Commodore this morning. Careful. I'm going down now. You stay here. If you see me with a girl, then you come down. If not, you try it again tomorrow. <laughs> well, Susan's bed is empty. Somebody can have it. Oh, well, I'll settle for the sofa right here. Um... <laughs> All right. Andy. Andy. Uh -huh. You take Susan's room. I'll fix the bed. Oh. Hey. Come on. Oh, wait a second, honey. I'll give you a hand. Here, hold this, will you, boy? You know, I, I've been thinking maybe we ought to skip the farewell dinner. After all, we've been together all last night. Yeah, it suits me, and after all that money I spent coming all the way from Marquette. I don't want to hurt D.P.'s feelings. After no. all, he was our pilot, but, but he's changed. 
maybe we all have. Seems to me he just tolerates us. Well, you know how it is. Uh, steamship lines, oil wells, you know. It makes things different. Well, well. Good night, George. Good night, Andy. Hey, my bunk ready? Just a second, Andy. Will you tell me why the devil you asked them to stay here? Darling, they're your best friends. I know, but I'm so bored. You didn't used to be. Yeah, well, Andy used to be a first-rate navigator. Now he's a certified public accountant, and he bores me to death. He'll hear you. And that other one, George, the backcountry hick he turned out to be. Why the devil did you drag me all the way down here from New Orleans? Please, darling, it's only one more day. Oh, me. Well, son, I'd be proud to tell you that your bunk is ready. Well, thank you, deep Pete. It's been wonderful seeing you. Wonderful seeing you, son. Good night, Zeta. Good night, Andy. Good night, son. Well, George, mighty nice to see us. Yeah, me too, D.P. Come along, honey. You go along, darling. I'll wait for Susan. I'll just do it. Good night, all. Yeah. Say, are you sleepy? No. No, me neither. All right. Have some coffee, hmm? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Believe I will. Well, say, Zeta, <laughs> why don't you come over here and sit down? Mm. You know, we've been so busy being gay, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. How are you? Oh, happy-go-lucky. Always am, I guess. You know, that must come from living in the woods. Yeah. I like to fish in the summer, hunt and trap in the winter. Oh, I like things easy. Don't you have to work? Oh, sure. We've got a we've got a gas station at the crossroads, but I let the kids tend to that. And we've got a we got a little store in the front room. <laughs> My wife tends to that. <laughs> I do it. You haven't changed a bit. You're wonderful. I bet you're anxious to get back. Oh, well, no, I wouldn't say that. But, well, after all, this has been a... Admit it, George. Well, admit what? That our little reunion has been one big flop, hasn't it? Well, what do you expect? The years go by and things change. They sure do. Well, even a tree changes. Some grow tall and... And some rot their hearts out. Am I right? You're right, but I won't admit it. Because you had such a wonderful friendship, you three. Yeah. You'd gone through so much. And out of all that came this deep bond, in spite of everything cruel and selfish and cynical. Oh, but that was eight years ago. I don't care if it was a hundred years ago. It's too good to lose. Here. Drink your coffee. I guess that's life, Zeta. The good things just don't last. When you hear the signal, it will be 7.30, January 1st, 1950. Good morning and Happy New Year. Does your head ache? Is your throat sore? Gargle with Pinapad. nice donkey and he wouldn't let us play with it. <laughs> but he won't find us in here. Nobody ever comes in here. Not this early anyway. <laughs> the place is like a tomb. Hmm? 
upon you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I have a transaction to attend to on an upper level. You look kind of wobbly. Have you been up all night, too? How would you like to take your little donkey and go away? Up. What happens if a man comes back and wants his donkey? Then buy him off with gold and silver. You mean pay? Well, surely he's human and has his price. If not, then he's a fiend. And you're going to have to give him his pound of flesh. Shall we ascend, good fairy? Are you going to take away your donkey now? Now sit down. Come, please sit down. Now that all depends. Will you sell it to me? Now, I tell you what, Susan. I'll take it up to my office, and then we can call your daddy and ask him for the money. Huh? All right. George, you know, it's been years since I've had such a good, honest, quiet talk with anyone. And do you know that I engineered our reunion here? Because I thought it would be good for DP. I thought he ought to remember there's such a thing as friendship and something to life besides a board of directors meeting. I'm afraid I'm too late. Yeah. Looks that way. You see, George, the point is if there's nothing in the world that one cares for, then there's nothing in the world that can bring him out of it. That's why I can't even talk to D.P. anymore. He doesn't care. Oh, George. Here you've been sitting and listening, and I feel wonderful because I know you care. I've been drinking, and I talk to him. Oh, Zeta, Zeta. Come on now, I'm sure he cares for you. But he doesn't. He doesn't even care about Susan, really. And she's a wonderful creature. Not because she's mine, George. She's just a wonderful little human being in her own right. Now she's really the only thing in my life that's real. Hello? Who? What? I, I, I don't understand. Get the operator to trace this call quickly, George. Yes, please. Tell me again. I... 24 hours to get the money. But the banks are closed. It's New Year's. 36. And you let us know where you want the money. I don't understand. Please don't do anything to Susan, please. Hello. This is the girl's father. There's no doubt about that money. You just tell us when, where, and how much you want. The police? Well, uh, no, of course it wouldn't. I swear it. What? Go to the front door. She says there's a message. Hello, listen to me. You harm one hair of that child's head, and I'll hunt you down if it takes the rest of my born days. You're not the little boy. Hello, operator, please try and trace that call. Hello, operator. Hey, hey, I got it. I got it. It's a phone booth in Grand Central on the lower level. What is it, honey? What is it, baby? Let me see. Hey, Mr. Bradford. This is a California girl who was kid. This is what happened to her when her parents went to the police. In just a moment, we'll see the second act of this evening's suspense drama. 
Now, during this brief intermission, I'd like you to take a look at another page in my album of familiar drivers. Now, the name of this gentleman is Melvin Muscles, and unfortunately, he really needs them. Why? Well, he needs them to push his car. You see, although Melvin's a muscle man, he has kind of a bad memory, and he never could remember to keep water in his battery. Well, sir, when he talked his problem over with me, the first thing I told him about was the Autolite Stay Full battery and its wonderful supply of dependable power. And then I told him about the fact that you have to remember to add water only three times a year in normal car use. Now, friends, let me show you why that's true. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles. Otherwise, they'll get together and short circuit the cells. You see, just like they're doing right there. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stay Full battery. In the Stay Full battery, every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place. There you see it, the fiberglass the feature that gives a real advantage to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, whereas the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stay Full battery doesn't need all that space. So we can take the extra space and use it to advantage by putting it up above the plates. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, enough in each one to cover the plates completely, we have space left for extra water. But you see, an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water Whereas the Autolite Stay Full battery with that extra space above the plates holds over three times as much water. That gives you over three times the liquid protection of ordinary batteries. And that's why you have to add water to your Autolite Stay Full battery only three times a year in normal car use. Yes, sir. So why don't you take my advice and enjoy the advantages of more convenience, greater safety, and longer life by having an Autolite Stay Full battery in your car. Well, our friend Melvin Muscles got one, and I want you to take it from me. He is really a satisfied customer. <laughs> of course, he doesn't still get his regular exercise pushing his car every morning, but he's more than happy to rely on the dependable power of his new Autolite Stay Full battery. Yes, sir, Mr. Muscles maintains that every smart motorist knows you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> And now, the second act of this evening's suspense story, The Bomber Command. Like I told you, honey, we're down here in the lower level. Now, I'll call you as soon as something happens. Now, don't worry, sweetheart. All right, Did you see a woman and a little girl in here this morning about 7.30? No, sir. Not many folks come in here except them that are commuters and got offices upstairs. Are you sure there wasn't a woman with a little girl? Maybe by the locker. How about over there by the phones? Well, I did see a little girl with a dog. Say, was, was this the dog? Could be. Look here, did you, did you see that woman with her? Oh, now I remember. There was a drunk fella that gave her a toy. Where'd they go, did you see? She stayed here and I took him up to the fifth. There he went out and made a bail line for the door to the catwalk. Maybe he's there yet, as far as I know. Come on. Yeah. Look down there. Hey, oh. this is high up. That information booth looks like a little church way down there. What do you say, <laughs> D.P.? Doesn't that give you that old feeling? Hey, that's Lexington Avenue. Excuse me, are we in Bellevue? To want to find out if you know anything about that little girl you gave a toy to this morning. It wasn't a toy, it was a donkey. A live donkey. Where did you meet her? The donkey? No, the girl. I think I was running and she chased me. Women are always chasing me. That's why I'm up here. Why were you running? Why, wasn't he running too? I don't know, was he? Mean man. He wouldn't let me play with his donkey, so I grabbed it and ran. I think... He was German. I know the donkey was German. Where did you run? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Listen here. Did you see that man again? The German? Yeah. That little girl followed you. Did he follow that little girl? Uh, uh did he follow... 
Yeah, yeah did he? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Oh, and I, I would like to be able to help you. You have such an earnest face. Are you in search of something? Looks like we better turn back, Yang. What do you say? Yeah, I guess so. All we discovered was a great big clown bag. Let's get out. Oh, nurse! Nurse! I need attention! Dear Daddy, please get the $30,000 by tomorrow morning at 11. Wait at the telephone booth where you found the puppy. Love, Susan. P.S. I wouldn't snoop around the catwalks. Remember what happened to the little girl from California. When you hear the signal, the time will be 10.30. Darling, please can't I go with you? I think you better stay here, sweetheart. They're not going to come for the money to the phone booth. No, no, that will be a call arranging rendezvous. See, the way Andy's got things figured, that gang's out putting right at the Grand Central. From where the calls have come from, and from figuring the time between things, I'm certain of it. Well, it's a perfect plan. All I have to do is rent an office and then put up a front. And then all I have to do is wait for some simpleton from New Orleans to come along with his little girl in his left hand and 30,000 bucks in his right. Mm. Honey, I want you to stay by the phones. We might get mixed up and have to call in. I uh, wait. Hurry. Come on, man. A little before 11, you go down by the telephone booth. If they are alone and nothing looks suspicious, take the elevator and call me from the telephone on the floor above. Yes, Hans. As soon as I get your call, I'll call them and give them the place of meeting. Then I'll take the child and I'll go and wait for them. Do I come back here? Yes, I'll bring the money here. You get your 7,000, then we can go. About 11.15. Exactly 11.15. Fellas, any questions been bothering the devil out of me. I suppose this all goes according to Hoy. We get back Susan, the man gets his money. Is everybody supposed to be quits then? I mean, these people are out and out characters. Now look here. The way I figured is this. I don't want to let other kid folk, you know, other parents go through what I've been going through. So what I'm trying to say is, let's get him. Yeah, let's get him. Okay, let's get him. Hello? Oh, it's you. It's Zeta. Never mind about George's gun. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Isn't that the woman that we saw scrubbing the floor by the phone? Isn't she the one we saw on the catwalk? Hey, D.T., let's go! Yo! We don't want to make that call. Come on, start talking. Start talking. I'll have to call. If I don't, he'll kill the time. Let her call. All right, watch what you're going to say. Where are they meeting? Come on, come on, where? Let's have it. At the catwalk. Hello. Hello. Everything's clear. It's all right. You get up on that catwalk. Okay, I got it. Listen, I'm going to catch a phone call. Be sure to bring that woman along. Mr. Bradford, you have the money? Then listen carefully. In five minutes, you will place the money in a briefcase at the center of the glass walk where yesterday you met the drunk. You will then withdraw to the south end and stay there. Do you follow? Well, what about my little girl? How do I know she's still alive? Now, when you enter, you will see me standing at the opposite end with her. She will go to the center, pick up the briefcase and bring it to me. If she does not, I will shoot her. When you see me leave by the north door, you may then call your daughter to meet you. 
Do you agree? Yes. Yes, of course I agree. Yes. Can't you get rid of her somewhere? Can't let her go. Put on that broom closet we discovered the door. 376, please. Hello, Zeta. Now listen carefully. You remember that catwalk that Andy drew on that map? You reckon you find it? Good girl. Now I want you to be in a downtown end. I think you're going to see our daughter. Yeah, looks like everything's set, honey. It's going to be a milk run. That's it, sweetheart. I'll see you. briefcase and bring it to me and everything will be over. title of our play and the names of our stars for next week. But first, a quick reminder to you drivers. You know, ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are designed to work as a team in the car's ignition system. And they're carried by your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer. So pay him a visit, and if your car needs replacements, he'll recommend either standard or resistor-type Autolite spark plugs in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications for your car and the heat range of your engine. Remember, wherever you see this sign, you'll find an Autolite spark plug dealer. And when you visit him, you'll find out why you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 